In order to accelerate, we need to decelerate. And if I didn't decelerate, it would look something like this. Struggling to transfer speed through to the object with extreme effort. If we introduce deceleration and high deceleration, so we're gonna stop quick, we let the system go. And we can transfer that speed now effortlessly through to the object. Now this just doesn't apply to throwing a ball, it also applies to your golf swing. And it's a critical characteristic of any ballistic action that you already make. It's a primitive action and you already possess this pattern. What we need to do is access it for the golf swing. If we were to see a swing without deceleration, it might look something like this. Serious lack of power. This is an eight iron, only 105 yards. Some people who know me might know that that's not actually that, that short. But everything was moving together. The hands, the rib cage, the pelvis, lower body. We're on the pressure mat here and we can see the pressure moving as I'm moving the body and the hands and the club. There's no real separation. And when I talk about separation, I'm talking about segmental separation. So we're using here predominantly linear momentum and we're not really converting it effectively into angular momentum. So a swing with deceleration, with the braking force applied, that's necessary to accelerate that chain would look something a little bit more like this. So big difference, 172 carry from 105. I'm not promising you're gonna get a 70 yard increase in distance, but you can see how much more dynamic, more explosive that action was. But it also gives me the opportunity now to smooth that swing down. Because I'm moving more efficiently, I can actually control the tempo and ultimately the speed I wanna strike the ball with. So controlling distance a bit more. But if I wanna go for that gain, for that maximum speed, it's there, it's in, I can access what's in the tank. So we can start to move in a more dynamic way and start to use our pressure. So look how quick the pressure's moving from side to side. That shifting, stopping, and moving in the opposite direction very quickly. It's a very abrupt shift of pressure, but look at the distance the pressure's shifting over. Now what we've got, we've got a pressure shift that can actually now initiate the action. So if I was to throw a ball, and we look at the pressure plate, you'll actually see the pressure shifts and stops very quickly. So you can see how the pressure's moving from trail side to lead side there to my lead foot, and it stops quickly. And look where the hand is, it's still way behind me. But this is now giving me the opportunity to use the vertical force and transfer this rotation through the body, ultimately transferring the angular momentum through to the club. Or the ball. So there's a very quick shift of pressure and it stops extremely abruptly which allows the system to fire, it allows that sequence to go. We need to decelerate to let the chain accelerate. We might be using body weight, we might be shifting our mass in an effort to move pressure and this is very different to shifting pressure to move mass. So this is body weight moving. Look how slow that pressure shift is. And even if I try to switch directions by moving my body mass, you can see my upper body's moving, my pelvis is swaying, everything's moving. If I've got a golf club in my hand, if that's traveling with me, it's slow. As opposed to this action. So this is lower body function, moving pressure which is now creating the opportunity to use that pressure in a way to maximize that kinematic sequence, firing the pelvis, the torso, the arms, unhinging the wrists and letting the club go. So it's very much like an emergency stop in a car. The car's traveling, it stops quickly, and the people get shunted forward, okay? If you were sat in the car and tried pushing yourself forward in the chair, that would be hard work. But by using the car's momentum, and then stopping, the body mass gets thrown forward. 
So essentially what we're doing here is we're throwing body mass. All these components are being displaced, i.e. they're moving through space effortlessly as a result of the forces we're creating. And all this momentum is accumulating outwardly from the body to the club. It's the same way you throw the ball. So we need to tap into these innate forces that we sense every day and utilize without even thinking in our golf swing. And this is how we're gonna do it. Hi guys, the season of love is upon us. And in keeping with the tradition, with that loving feeling, we've got a campaign and a challenge for all the Zen team and all you guys out there to hit the Zen love heart. So we're gonna play a draw and a fade. And I want you to send yours in too. So hashtag in love with golf, hashtag Zen love heart post them on all our platforms. We're gonna pick out two players. One's gonna win a GRFI system and the other lucky winner is gonna win a three hour golf session. So get yourselves down to the driving range, get hit in the draw and the fade in succession, two balls, hashtag the comments, drop them on the platform and you're in the hat for those Valentine prizes. So I've got the five iron and this is how we do it. That's the draw. And that's the fade. Happy Valentine's everyone. And don't forget to treat your partner. <laughs> a basic piece of equipment. I've got a GRF system here. You could just use a piece of wood on a golf club. And I'm just gonna show you the difference between moving pressure and moving mass. So if I wanna tip this board, okay, I can either use my body weight, so this will be moving my body mass. Essentially that's rocking the board, but I can only go so fast before I start to lose control because I can't really stop. So there's literally a tipping point where I'm compromising balance and speed. And really, both to be honest. If, if, I, if I wanna go a bit faster, I'm probably gonna struggle to maintain balance, so I'm probably not gonna allow myself to go faster. So it's almost like putting a limiter on the swing. But if I use the lower body, if I start to use a pressure shift, now that travels much faster and I'm having to do minimal work. My center of mass is hardly moving. It's much more stable, but there's a lot of pressure being moved here. So how do we go about sensing this load on the body? Because what we're talking about here is loading and unloading. We're talking about how we're using the ground to essentially load the chain to fire the chain. Just like the emergency stop in the car, we need to be able to stop to fire the chain. This movement here, when we stop, this is what loads the chain ready to go. So taking the club in both hands and then removing your lead hand. So just right-handed for me. We're gonna start swinging the club nice and freely just from the wrist so we start to feel the wrist allow the elbow to flex and extend and allow the forearm to rotate freely supinate pronate allow the shoulder to move it's a free chain this is a real life rope okay this is we're not trying to assimilate some kind of rope action because to swing a rope means this would actually be rigid to swing the flaccid rope and then the rope starts to react. So this would be stable, whereas in a golf swing, it's gonna be mobile. So sometimes in an effort to feel the whole, if you like, gross movement pattern, using something like a towel or a rope actually creates more tension through the body without recognizing it, or not using the whole chain, maybe just the wrist. If you were cracking a, a towel, you don't need the whole body, just do it with the wrist. So you might not apply the body in a dynamic way utilizing every joint to move that towel or that rope because there's no need because you can just do it with the arm or do it with the wrist whereas with the golf club this is what we're going to use in real life we're feeling the weight of it we're feeling the properties of it we're reacting to the length of it and we're going to start to adapt our movement to the club it's all about adaptation to the instrument we're going to be using so we don't want to substitute that instrument or we're adapting to something that's artificial. So swing the club freely first, feel the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, let the shoulder move, so the scap, I'd do a shoulder roll as well, 
just feeling that shoulder rotating there, just nice big circles. That's getting the scap gliding. So we've got some mobility there. Starting with the feet close together, we're gonna swing forward and then take a step back. To swing it back. But before the club reaches what we perceive to be the top of, the, of its backswing, and before the hand reaches the end of its path, we're going to have stepped with the left foot towards the target. And the moment we do that is the moment we're going to start to feel the load on the wrist. And it's the moment we've shifted the pressure and it's stopped abruptly. So if you look at the pressure plate, you can see how far that pressure shifts very quick and you can see on the graph how sharp that load is. So we're actually loading to the floor very abruptly because we're stopping. What does this mean in terms of the golf swing? Well what we've just done, we've just created lag and we've just created the conditions now where we can use our vertical force to transfer all these rotations through the body out to the club. And you'll get a sense now of how the wrist has reacted. This cocks the wrist naturally, loads the system, it's all ready to go. And this is now where we start to go vertical. What I'd recommend you do now is put your left hand on. And you've got a feeling now of where you are at this moment in time when the pressure has shifted to the left. And from here, we can go up. Now I'd recommend we do this as part of the drill, so we're not starting from, you can start to sense this change of direction. And the moment you need to go up. As a byproduct of this effortless power, you're gonna potentially have an opportunity to control the club better because there's less tensioning going on at the end of the chain, less excessive rotation and movement with the chest, the shoulder, with the arms, rotating more to try and get every ounce of power we can get from these smaller joints when actually we've got the bigger joints and the, the bigger segments creating the power transferring it effortlessly out to the end of the club which just like throwing a ball allows us to control the directional element a lot easier we're tapping into the components which are there for power and we're utilizing the components of the system which are there for control so to do this what's underlying all this is how we're using our pressure to move the body to create momentum that we can sense and recognize and now we can start to regulate it and this is allowing us to adapt our movement to not only get the most power but also get the directional component to the swing as soon as we swing this forward with the wrist we're going to change the direction of the club by using the momentum of the body and then the club reacts changes direction and we can sense the momentum now from the club, so we can sense the momentum of the club head. We've got to move the lead foot back towards the target way before where we sense where the top of the backswing might be, okay? Because your backswing is determined by this pressure shift. There's a momentum you're gonna very quickly recognize. So with a golf ball, we can start to shift forward to go back. We can give ourselves a little bit of a head start. We can create those conditions for that momentum, swing the club back by just shifting forward. You'll always see some shift, some movement from the players when you watch golf on television. You'll see something initiate the movement. It may not be as exaggerated as a Matt Wolf. It might not be a Henrik Stenson. It might just be a little shuffle, a little forward press, knee kicking the knee. There's gonna be something where they're applying pressure under this lead foot first to push. So now we're there, priming the system ready, and there's a little press. One six nine, so one seventy, nice little draw. So the control element was there, and that's how we can utilize those braking forces to access instant speed and execute it with precision and control.